How does light work? And that's how Isaac Newton gave us one of his greatest works, optics, teaching us about laws of light and spectrum, which we use in lasers today. When he wasn't sticking a needle up his eye, Isaac Newton was busy sticking it to other people. Isaac Newton was born on Christmas Day in 1642 in this place in England. The same Isaac Newton who got hit by an apple on his head when he was sitting under a tree and told us Gravity exists. Except that it did not. I mean, the apple did not fall on his head. But yeah, he did tell us about gravity and that changed the way we understand planetary movements, orbits, etc. While the ordinary masses were still farming and obsessing with religion, fighting taxes and bandits and pixies and demons and let's not forget those evil witches, Newton was among those few scientists, those natural philosophers and mathematicians and physicists and astronomers who were trying to actually figure it out and pull the rest of us out of darkness. Well, he did not quite succeed in that last bit because these still exist. Genius. Isaac Newton made the first theoretical calculation of the speed of sound, generalized the binomial theorem to non-integer exponents, developed a method for approximating the roots of a function, and classified most of the cubic plane curves. And I have no idea what I just said. In short, the man was a genius. Newton was born to a farming family, and when he was a teen, his mom thought, enough of doodling on paper, now come and grow radishes. Newton failed miserably as a farmer and went back to his doodling work at university and went on to become one of the most respected mathematicians ever and gave us his stellar work, Principia Mathematica, in 1686, which tells us about universal laws of motion and gravity, movement of planets, etc. etc. And this raised a giant storm of applause for Newton, but also a tip storm with another scientist, Robert Hooke. And this became one of the best-known nerd rivalries in history. Robert Hooke and Newton, like the best of nerds, sent their punches and harshest burns to each other over… letters. Hooke said he came up with the idea of gravitation first. Newton said he did. While Newton theorized that light was composed of particles, Hooke believed it was composed of waves. Both were right. Newton was sensitive to any criticism to his work. To put it mildly, in other words, if anyone criticized his work, he would get anxious, would defend his work with irrational behavior, he would quit public life and coop up in his residence, not talking to anyone, get totally paranoid, threatened to quit the Royal Society and remained only when other members assured him how much they esteemed him. And in 1693, Newton even suffered a complete nervous breakdown and that's what put a stop to his pen fight with Hook. He didn't just stick it to Hook. Newton wrote as a confession of his sins, threatening my father and mother to burn them and the house over them, and also punching my sister. So yes, he probably wasn't your gentle sweet nerd who'd politely help you set up your printer. He took it very seriously when in 1699 he was appointed Master of England's Royal Mint and Newton was determined to bring justice and punish counterfeiters. Counterfeiting and clipping of coins was high treason in 17th century England, punishable by the felon being hanged, drawn and quartered. But it wasn't very easy to convict a counterfeiter because of tedious bureaucratic hurdles and most criminals usually got away. Those of you in India know exactly what I'm talking about. However, Isaac Newton wasn't going to let incompetent bureaucracy come between him and justice. He did not trust the course of law and took on criminals himself. He started disguising himself and frequenting shady bars and taverns down the dark alleys of London to gather all the evidence against the criminals himself. To surpass all the barriers to prosecution, Newton came up with a brilliant idea. He made himself a Justice of the Peace, which is a judicial post which did not need any legal education. This allowed Isaac Newton to conduct cross-examinations to convict felons himself and he conducted more than 100 cross-examinations of witnesses, informers and suspects within a year and successfully prosecuted 28 counterfeiters and sent them to their execution. And back to university, Newton got into another fight, this time over calculus. 
not with calculus like most of us, but with another mathematician who dared to publish his work on calculus. Poor Gottfried Leibniz. Newton claimed that Newton had come up with the idea of calculus first and that Leibniz had stolen his unpublished work. This became a huge controversy in the small world of smart people and Newton pulled all his Royal Society muscle. An inquiry was set up by the Royal Society when Newton was its president. They decided in favour of… you guessed it. Leibniz died in disfavour of his patron. But later studies kinda say that both men came up with calculus independently. Flamsteed was a royal astronomer who catalogued stars and comets seen in the night sky, and Newton wanted this information for his moon theory to understand Earth's gravitational force. He insisted that Flamsteed publish his work, but Flamsteed instead sent his assistants incomplete and incorrect notes. This made Newton angry and both the men exchanged nasty letters. Newton tried to physically inspect the Royal Observatory, and both the geniuses got into a physical skirmish over the instruments. Flamsteed won. When not tussling with other mathematicians, you know what Newton was really into? Alchemy. He spent good decades of his life looking for the Philosopher's Stone. He didn't know it's kept in the rice in fort. <laughs> Click here for it. Anyway, people call him crazy, arrogant, insecure. Some say it was because of mercury poisoning. All in all, a genius who ultimately was only human, I guess. What do you think? You can support this channel by buying me a coffee, link in the description. And if you liked this video, go ahead, click all those subscribes, likes buttons, you know the drill. See you next Monday.